Welcome to the Write Better Fiction podcast, the show that helps you, well, write better fiction. I'm Shane Miller, urban fantasy author, writing coach, and story geek, and each week I'll be talking to industry experts about the writing craft, publishing, and the business of being an author. Enjoy the show. Hello, fictioneers, and welcome to episode 24 of the Write Better Fiction podcast. Before I introduce this week's guest, some of you might have noticed that I haven't released a podcast episode in the last few weeks. I had a bereavement in the family, so I needed to step back and take a break from everything, but I'm back now and I'm ready to get the show back on the road, as they say. That said, this week I'm chatting to Morgana Best, the author of Stop Making Others Rich, all about how to sell books direct so stay tuned for that. Now it's time for question of the week. This week's question is, are you currently selling direct? And if not, what's stopping you? You can leave a comment on the YouTube video or on Instagram where I'm at Shane Miller writes. If you want early access to episodes and exclusive access to the Fictioneer community on Discord, where you'll get to participate in things like question of the week and weekly accountability, you can support the show on Patreon, for just $5 a month. Head over to patreon.com forward slash write better fiction. When I reach 50 patrons, I'm going to start recording a monthly patron only Q&A to answer all your writing questions. Okay, that's about it for me. So let's get straight into the interview with Morgana. Hello, and welcome to the Write Better Fiction podcast. Today, I'm joined by Morgana Best. USA Today bestselling author Morgana Best started selling Print Direct in 1993 and ebooks direct from her website in 2003. In 2007, indie authors turned to the retailers, but now the tide is turning back to selling direct. She's also the author of Stop Making Others Rich How Authors Can Make Bank by mm-hmm. Selling Direct, which we're here to talk about today. Hi, Morgana. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. You are so welcome. So I was wondering if you could start by telling us a bit about you and your journey into writing. Oh, that gosh, that's a hard one. I think <laughs> I was born loving books. I read everything I could get my little hands on when I was a child. It was escapism for me. I always thought of books as escapism, and that's why I write happy books where I only murder nasty people. And there are happy endings because I think books make other realms come alive and of course that was back before quantum jumping (laughs) but that's how I thought of it as a child. We're here today to talk about your fantastic book Stop Making Others Rich and I was talking off air with you just a second ago about how as soon as I read it I knew I wanted you to come on the show because it's a great book and I think it'll help a lot of people. Um, What are the key benefits for authors when selling directly from their own websites? lots where do I start it's so wonderful for a start you get paid immediately you don't have to wait for 60 days at least 60 days you can handle returns you don't have to give them if you don't want to nothing like the audible situation you get all the money not a royalty you have complete creative control and people selling on the retailers might think what do you mean I already have creative control but if you sell on apple and you're selling a box set, you can't have a 3D image or any images of other covers on that cover. Kobo doesn't want you to do that, but the other retailers allow 3D images. So you can do whatever you like when you have your own store. Of course, when you have your own store, it's a good idea to show 3D images like an audio book, an ebook, or a bundle to make it clear that it's an ebook, not a paperback, or a paperback, not an ebook. And so once you get paid immediately, but better still, you own the customer. Now, say someone spends a lot of money sending someone to Amazon, they spend a fortune on Amazon ads. Now, when that customer arrives on that page, they don't just see that author's book, although that's the main product. They see at least 40 other books. And then Amazon will try to upsell them. Now, anyone who's ever had an Amazon affiliate account will see that people buy sofas or dog beds, all sorts of unimaginable things. And Amazon, of course, keeps that money because the money is in 
the cross cell and the up cell, like McDonald's. You know, as I always say, when my kids were little in Australia, McDonald's ice cream cones were 30 cents. I had three kids. I'm going through the drive through I never got out of there with 90 cents. It was always, do you want fries with that? Would you like a happy meal? Would you like an upsized happy meal? Would you like an apple pie? <laughs> That's where the money is. But in the case of the retailers like Amazon, all these are the ones funding the 30 cent ice cream cones for Amazon to make all the money with the burgers and the upsells and things like that. So when you have your own store, you have the customer and it's not just one ebook that you're selling. Like yesterday, I sold uh, an $80 bundle of just, I think it was 15 or 16 books in one series. And that's very typical. And one of my students frequently has libraries buying whole, she writes very long series. Like I always joke, I always say, have you written your 60th book in the series yet? But she writes long series and people libraries will buy every single paperback in that series and it happens on a regular basis. So these are one-off things. And if you're used to selling on the retailers, your people are probably thinking, oh, great, I've sold, my, I've sold a book in so many multiples of this single book. But it's not the case. When you're running an e-commerce business, you're selling not just that book, you can upsell to lots of bundles. Say you're selling the first book in the series, you can upsell to every other book in that series like Amazon does and to more expensive products and that's what you can do when you own the business yeah and that's a great point about um owning your business because arguably like you said you don't really own your business if you're only selling on third-party retailers because they have the control to some extent so which direct sales platforms or storefronts would you recommend for authors starting out with direct sales and why? Well, I'd say it depends. People think I'm a mad Shopify person, which <laughs> I am. but it depends on your objectives. I always say there is no one size fits all. Say someone hates, I love marketing, I love admin, but say someone absolutely is passionate about writing and nothing else the thought of having to do any marketing makes them hide in a cupboard. They can't handle it. And anything business, like I'm mathematically challenged, but I love business things. And if they don't love business things, then don't have an e-commerce business. So then they'd have their website. They could put some Shopify buy buttons or they could put pay hip on their site. Or if they're a genius with, say, a WordPress site and they could have WooCommerce, it depends on the person's circumstances. So there's an e-commerce business and there's selling on the retailers and selling a bit direct to get a bit of money, but you don't, your aim would not be to surpass that money and make all your money from your store and have an e-commerce business. If you're doing that, you can't go past Shopify because it's worlds ahead of everything else. And with Shop Shopify, you can have Clavio, which you can do amazing things with like browse abandonment. Someone lands on your page and looks at your product and doesn't add to cart or anything. You can legally email that person and it's completely compliant because the technicalities are they have freely gone to your site. Therefore, you can legally email them. Now, they don't have to have subscribed. Clavio can pick them up. Facebook can pick them up if they have a Shopify account or if they're on Clavio's radar. So they don't have to have subscribed to you at all. It's quite amazing how they'll pick them up and then they can email them and say, you were looking at this product and you can do an email flow, otherwise known as uh, other places call them automations or workflows. And then if they add to checkout or if they add to cart and don't reach checkout, you can send them different flows. So if someone goes to your store and looks and doesn't do anything else, you can keep going to that person and saying, it's like they're window shopping, but it's like you go outside and say, hey, I saw you looking in my window. Would you like to come in? And then on the third email, you might say, here's a 20% discount. And that's another thing. Amazon has trained authors to sell very cheaply, 99 cents, 2.99, 3.99, 
instead of say $6.99 or $9.99 for a single book because Jeff Bezos himself said that was what they wanted to do. And that's why when I started, when just after Kindle came out, they had the $9.99 rule for the royalty back then. And all these years later, it hasn't changed. And that's because it doesn't benefit Amazon. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. They have to do what's good for their business. And that's what's good for their business. They want to get people into Amazon to sell them sofas and $3,000 products, $300 products. They, they don't care. You're or someone's um, $2.99 or $3.99 book is that 30 cent ice cream cone to get someone to Amazon so Amazon can profit at that author's expense. They're using authors to get them and that's good for Amazon. And we should be doing things like that for ourselves and we can with a direct store. Yeah, definitely. And um, you've mentioned, we've sort of, talked around pricing and royalties um a little bit there and mm -hmm. i hadn't sent you this question in advance but it raises the point you mentioned that um authors can keep more royalties by selling direct can you explain why that is and how that works well when you sell direct say you have a you're selling a $9.99 ebook from your store that $9.99 minus the credit card fees goes straight into your account you keep all of it you don't just get 70%. Now, say you have priced your ebooks at $9.99 or $8.99, and then you have a, a three book bundle. I'm very mathematically challenged. I'm trying to see my head. But <laughs> Me too. Um, oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> you look very mathematically gifted, actually, if I was thinking, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not. But uh, $21.99, you could sell that for. Now, you couldn't. Like I look back at the days when I used to have my box sets on Amazon for $9.99 and I think had I gone completely mad. Yeah. But I'd sell those for I think $18.99 and my pen name sells hers for $21.99 for three books. And then I have, you know, five book bundles and you can't do that on Amazon. You can do them on the other retailers, but then they take a nice chunk. So when you're getting up with that sort of money, 70% or 60% of that is a nice chunk. Mm -hmm. And you have it all for yourself. And what's more, if you set Shopify to pay you daily, you can have that in your bank the next day. So there's no cash flow problem. Yeah, exactly. And that can be a big problem for some authors, uh, the cash flow issue, waiting the 60 days or whatever it is. Okay, so back to the storefront then. How can authors optimise their storefronts to maximise their sales and their customer engagement as well? Well, that's a, this is interesting because a lot of people think, okay, I've set up my store, yay, goodbye, that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah. But it's not. There's so much. Like I see so many people saying, look, here's my store, isn't it wonderful? And it looks nice, but they're not doing the things they need to do. For example... The colour of the buy button is super important. There's lots and lots of research done on that. While a billion dollar companies do research on buy buttons, you should never have a white or a black buy button. Or um, it needs to be contrasted. If it's white, if it was contrasted with something that would be better. There are so many things you have to look. All the good information should be above the fold and you shouldn't have to click to see a book description. Now, there seems to be a trend at the moment for some authors to go around where you have to, you go to the product page and then you click to read the blurb. But all that great juicy information should be at the top, above the fold, so people don't need to scroll. You need to catch that buyer and catch them as soon as they land on your page. Catch them like Amazon does with the book description at the top. You don't scroll down on Amazon or click through to read the blurb or what you should have in a product. And that's another thing. Books are products. I always say they're not magical unicorns. A book <laughs> is simply a product. Yeah, that is very true. And uh, that was, a. I, I remember first having that mindset shift um, quite early in my career. And it was the biggest, like it's the thing that's helped me the most, I think, um, to realise that it is a product and not like a precious baby. <laughs> <laughs> Both, but you well, have to sell your baby <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what strategies could authors employ then to encourage readers to buy directly from their store as opposed to third party online retailers? And I'm asking you this because a lot of the backlash I get about selling direct is, um, oh, but how do I drive people to my store? Like that sounds really hard. That's because they're coming from a retailer, selling on retailers perspective. And it's difficult because if that's the only context someone knows, it's very difficult for them to see the other side, the e-commerce side. It's like, but do you hear people walking around saying, I'm about to open a jewellery store? Woe is me. This is just not going to work because there's, well, in Australia, we have Michael Hill jewellers and I can't think of any others, but uh, we have jewellers out here. No one's going to buy. Books are simply products. You don't need, it's the old myth. I have to train readers. Well, they're not puppies. You don't need to train. <laughs> you know. I said the magic word. Now my dogs are getting restless. But <laughs> you, you don't need to train readers. All you need to do is say, here's my store. That's basically it. Tell them you have a store. And if you have, obviously, selling on the retailers, people have newsletter lists, they're the low-hanging fruit. Tell those people you have a store and get them onto your Clavio list away from your old retailer list mm. where you can deal with them by a discount like I'll say to my list you know whatever <laughs> come to my store um here's 20 percent off you can spend it on whatever you like but also you'll see a pop-up and you'll get x amount off there you know sign up I'll say it much better than that of course but <laughs> you, you're always encouraging them to get on your other list and it's interesting when you have Clavio, it will show you how exactly how much you make. So I send out a newsletter, I look on Clavio the next day or the day after, it'll tell me exactly how many sales I've made from that. So it's not a guessing game. Like if you send out, say, a MailChimp or a MailerLite newsletter to the retailers, it's a guessing game to the other retailers. Say you have Amazon affiliate links in it, you'd get an idea depending how accurate they happen to be at the time. But this way you actually have hard evidence of exactly how much that made you. And you make a very good profit with Clavio, otherwise no one would use it. And you can see exactly how much you're making. The figures are there right in your face all the time. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that puts people off is international sales tax. So how can authors navigate uh, the complexities of international sales tax when selling directly? Like how, how do they deal with that? I think that's the thing that puts people off more than mm. anything else. Yeah. But when you think about it, every single business in the world that sells cross borders deals with international sales tax. Another thing I'd say is local accountants typically know nothing about international sales tax. So consult them for sales tax in the person's own country but don't think they're going to know anything about international sales tax and usually international sales tax depends on the buyer's location not so much yours depending so if you're in Europe it's a bit different depending where you are but in most countries in the world it has nothing to do with where you live unless it's um physical nexus for the US but say I'm an Aussie um I don't have physical nexus in the US. I only would have to pay sales tax if I reached a certain threshold in certain states. And in Australia, you have to be registered for sales tax. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. If you make more than $70,000 Australian dollars a year in Australia only, then you have to pay it. So it's not like a, a blanket thing. And then you've got some places where they charge sales tax on ebooks and paperbacks, but not audio books. But there are some very good apps that will do everything for you. I use EAS UK and the EU compliance app for the UK and Europe. And they will go into your store for free and they will set everything up for you. And then they only take a small portion of each sale or for example um paperbacks and like print books and ebooks are zero rated sales tax in the areas they do 
but they still have to be once you're registered you have to lodge returns on them even though you don't pay any of that so it, it is a really complicated subject so do a reputable course that has a module on this and have with the course provider to help is basically the best way to go because it, it is actually quite it's one of those things that's simple when you know how <laughs> but it shouldn't put anyone off because it's it's not as bad as people think and there are things you can do to make it really easy yeah there are like you said there are apps that can help um with varying degrees of like user experience but yeah there, there are ways that we can navigate this absolutely perfect um, and another thing that you've mentioned a couple of times and something that I loved from the book was the, your access to the customer is so much better when you sell direct. So why is this ability to access customer data and all the analytics that come with it a major advantage of selling direct? And how can we actually take this information and leverage it? Well, basically, there are three types of audiences, cold audiences who've never heard of you, don't know you exist warm audiences they know you exist but they haven't bought from you and hot audiences and they're the ones that have bought from you but when you sell on the retailers you don't own those audiences you don't know that Fred Bloggs has gone and bought book one in your series or Mary Smith has gone and bought book two you don't know you don't have those customers and the retailers have them and they can do what you can now do when you have the customer which is re-engage and remarket. so and that's what you do. You re-engage and remarket to warm and hot audiences. And they're the biggest source of income typically for store owners. So they're the ones that you, ne you need them because that's where you make all your money. And you don't have them if you sell on the retailers. No, because Amazon is not going to share their customers with no. you. <laughs> no, and you can also target by how much someone's bought. Like if you have customers who typically spend over a hundred dollars a month, you can do a, a marketing campaign or a Clavio email just to people who spend a lot. And when you do Facebook ads, you can target people who are more likely to spend more as opposed to just numbers. And there's so much when you have all this information, but when you know who your customer is, you can set up a direct relationship with them. Yeah, you can. And I think that's the key piece as well. Like, I think this is where you can turn customers into fans uh, of yeah. of your books and of you as well, because they get to see yeah. a little bit of you in the communication that you have. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Um, another thing that we've mentioned quite a bit here is the concepts of upselling and bundling products on your author yeah. store, which again is a complete game changer and something that is near impossible to do otherwise um what are these strategies and why are they beneficial for an author business authors in particular i i always say books are just any other product but the trouble with books they are a low priced item and that is a big problem because it, it will typically cost you as much to advertise a hundred dollar product on facebook as it does a five or six dollar ebook so you can see that's a problem to start with <laughs> monetary wise so when you just have a six or a nine dollar book or horrors at 2.99 or 3.99 which <laughs> i see on the sites and i just feel like i have to contact them and say please triple your prices yeah but that's not much that's not much money and customers will happily spend a lot more so if you cross sell to a three book bundle or even a 10 book bundle you can have you can make a lot more money just in the one sale and then if you have a post purchase upsell when the customer lands on the thank you page that has a 100 open rate you can sell them something else say 50 percent discount of course you've hiked your prices up to where that 50 percent discount they'll think yay a 50 percent discount and usually they'll take it up because it seems like such a good bargain and you can get sophisticated upsells where you can do an upsell for people who've bought this series or this book you can really narrow it down and be quite fancy with it but that way your average order value has to be high and if you've only got like a five dollar book five dollar average order value is horrendous you yeah. want your average order value as high as possible and you can do that with upsells and cross sells so if you advertise 
I think I said before, the first book in a series and say you've got another eight books, put them all on your bundling app. You frequently bought together like Amazon has. Mm. So at the bottom of the page, they look and you say, would you like to buy all books in this series 20% off? And a lot of people take that up. And then when they get to the thank you page, you sell them a different series, half price with a timer, count it down four minutes or five minutes. They will, a lot of people will take that up as well. Yeah, definitely. And, and tricks like having the timer and stuff are, are just golden because then it creates that sense of urgency, right? Exactly. It does. Yeah. Great. And um, I, guess, <clears throat> I guess you can be really creative in how you upsell as well. I've, I know an author friend of mine who's using um, like merchandise related to their books to upsell. And I guess that can work really well at a higher price point too, right? Merchandise is very good because it's typically a higher price and it's very easy to tie into books. So I'm always saying like a cozy author could tie in pet products mm. and Goodness knows that's as far as my head will go, cozy <laughs> author. But you can always, like romance authors could tie in other things or sci-fi people could tie in exciting things as well. So, yeah, there's plenty of merch you can sell. As long as it's, the thing is, as long as you want that high price, high yeah. price, hike up the price and then offer a good discount and people love it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's great. So this is the Write Better Fiction podcast, and this is my favourite question, so much so that I ask all my guests. So, Morgana Best, why do you write fiction? Because it's, I love being, it's a creative outlet for me, and I get paid doing it, which is even better. But it's, as, like I said, it's escapism. When I was, I had a very difficult childhood, so I escaped into books. And to me, they were like the Nani wardrobe could really relate to that. They were stepping into another world. And to me, they were always real. And to me now, don't have me committed, but my characters speak to me and they'll say, hurry up and write me next. And they okay, just give me a minute on with this, have to write this one first. But to me, books are really real. The worlds within books to me are as almost as real as reality. I, I see them as something. So I don't even know the words, but they're there and they're real. And I absolutely love writing and reading are my favorite things in the world to do i yeah. absolutely love it and also when people annoy me um <laughs> i'll put them in a book and murder them and that's very therapeutic yeah i do the same thing do you i do Excellent. i do the same thing and it's funny you said about um kind of characters nagging you to write them because i was in the middle of one book and then this character just dropped in my head pretty much fully formed and you know they demand they just demand that you write them instead and that that can be difficult um to manage but I can I'm completely with you on that <laughs> oh isn't that good I'm so happy with that. I'm not I was a bit worried about myself <laughs> no no definitely not that's great <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell everyone a little bit about where they can find out more about you and everything you do well, they can find, I have a Facebook group called Authors Selling Direct, and I also have a website of the same name, authorsellingdirect.com. So okay. just think Authors Selling Direct and think <laughs> more around the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. And uh, also go out and get the book because it is a fantastic introduction to everything we've spoken about today. Uh, yeah, really great. So thank you for coming on the show, Morgana. That was fantastic. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Morgana and picked up a ton of actionable tips on how to sell books direct. Join me next week when I'll be chatting to Tom Holbrook all about his new book, Write Your Novel, First Page to First Draft. Have a great writing week. Thanks for listening to the Write Better Fiction podcast. Remember to hit subscribe on your favourite podcatcher and leave a review and we'll chat again next time.